Uh, can I call the committee to order, please? Thank you. Uh, welcome. Um, my name, and for coming out on this cold evening, um, my name's Councillor Higgins, and I'm the chairman of this, this committee. Um, for those attending, welcome, and those on YouTube, welcome too. Uh, details of business will be considered today, as shown on the agenda, copies of which are in the room over in the corner and are underneath the live broadcast. For those present in the room and attend to speak, please note that you will be filmed and any statement you make will be recorded and made public and a reminder to anyone speaking today that your voice will only be heard when you press the button on the table. Uh, we're not expecting a fire alarm, so if officers ask you to you hear one, officers will direct you out of the, out of the building. If you have a mobile device uh, or a tablet, can you please make sure it's switched off or silent? Um, and obviously, as a committee, we, we use tablets and, and things to look at the agenda, so forgive us for that. Um, I'd just like to introduce the councillors and officers present. Uh, Councillor Steve Tuckles, my vice chairman. Uh, Councillor Tubidar. <coughs> Councillor Gohill. Councillor Mand. Councillor Sansapuri. Welcome. And Councillor Singh. Thank you. Uh, officers present today is Ros Johnson, Planning Citizen Service Manager. Fiona Ray, Planning Officer, Nisha Burnham, Principal Planning Officer, Alan Tilly, uh, our Transport and Aviation Manager. Uh, legal advice today is Glenn Egan, welcome. And the most important person in the room is Anisha sitting right next to me, telling me what I do and what I don't do and what I should do. And uh, we'll go further than that, so welcome you all. Uh, first we'll go to the agenda. Apologies for absence. No apologies. Uh, declarations of interest matters to come before this meeting. I have one. I will be leaving item 13, um, which I will move the agenda to do that after we heard from the petitioners. And my <coughs> vice chairman will be taken out for a non-petitional interest, as I know the petitioner. Um, okay. So, uh, do we agree the minutes from the last meeting? Great, thank you. Uh, is there any matters notified in advance or urgent? There is none. Uh, to confirm public and private reports, all public, all part reports are in public in part one. Okay, so I think that's about all I've done. Is that correct, Nisha? That's right. So over to you, Fiona, for the first item, which is item six, which is 42 Peel, uh, Peeled Heath Road. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application um, is for the demolition of the existing property at 42 Peeled Heath Road, um, which is currently in use as a bed and breakfast, and to erect a three-storey block of flats providing seven new two-bedroom units. So just turning to the slides, you can see the property is on the north side of Peeled Heath Road. Um, next door, I'll show you in the photos, is in kind of a commercial use as a jet clean business, and number 40 next door is in residential use. Newland Close, that's talked about a lot in the report, sort of surrounds the site to the back. And you can see, as again discussed in the report, the rear building line, or the front building line of this property is quite different to others um, nearby. Turning to the constraint plans, one of these is relevant um, to the reason for refusal four, because um, we talk about them not signing up to the um, agreement not to be allowed parking permits. So you can see just outlined there the um, restriction we have. It's the location plan. Again, you can see that relationship and that setback and the existing floor plans. I think these plans are, are quite helpful to show what's being demolished and that the property does have quite a large footprint, but the actual sort of volume and floor space is broken up, but the bulk is quite well articulated um, across that plot. So turning to um, this plan, I think this is again helpful to show the relationships. Um, you can see very um, faintly the lighter coloured yellow at the back is actually the single storey elements of the building. And these are the existing elevations. You can see that rear elevation sort of presenting as a storey and a half rather than a full two storeys. And you can see those side elevations and how the bulk is broken up. This is the proposed site plan and shows the new block within its context. Um, and you can see it sort of responds to the footprint and the envelope of the existing building to a degree, but has quite a markedly different impact, we believe, on 
the character and appearance of the area as well as the impact on the residential amenities of neighbours. And that all feeds into the reasons for refusal one and two that we're, re re we're recommending and is explained fully in the report. Here is the floor plan that shows the seven two-bed units. That, again, that links back to the refusal reasons. We are concerned that no family units are being provided, so there's not a sort of sustainable mix presented to us. And here are the elevation drawings that show the bulk of the existing building, sort of dotted very faintly in an outline around it compared to the new one. Um, there is a notable increase in that sort of bulk size and massing. And here are the proposed north and west elevation showing that crown we speak of, and in that backland position set back from the road, we, we believe it's oversized. And then just going through the rest of the slide, showing the section details. Um, we talk a lot about the dormer windows in the roof and the potential for the overlooking, and you can see why that is. Although some of the drawings label the dormers as being high level, you can see that the actual floor to ceiling and the, and the relationships would mean there would be overlooking without them being obscure glazed and then subsequently changing the quality of that accommodation. This is just a bird's eye view that actually helps show you that relationship and how sort of tight-knit it is. Um, and this photograph, I think, helps uh, explain reason for refusal five, where we talk about the visibility displays and the crossover changes, because it's that wall we're talking about being pulled forward and having a subsequent impact on um, highway and pedestrian safety. That's the building just sitting back in the plot you can see there. Looking sort of to the left of the site, that's that commercial unit that isn't so affected by the proposal given the nature of the use. But here is the number 40 Peeled Heath Road, and it's sitting behind that property where the boundary sort of kinks back that we're concerned about. And that's another view just looking back to Peeled Heath Road. The relationship with Newland Close, which is very sensitive and discussed a lot, is shown best probably in this bird's eye view, um, which you can see. So that concludes my presentation, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fiona. Uh, that's very kind. Um, John Malcolm, would you like to come to the table? May I call you John, or would you like to call him Mr. Mr. Malcolm? Um, John, you have five minutes. Uh, the traffic light system is quite clear. Green. Green is four, amber is one, and then red is stop. And no offence, but I will stop you when it goes to red. Okay? As soon as you press the button, yeah, we'll press the timer. <coughs> so, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I live at uh, One Union Close, which has a boundary with uh, 42 Peel Heath Road. I'm going to go through uh, five areas parking issues, risks to children, risks to pedestrians and cyclists pollution, over-dominance, and loss of privacy. Parking issue. Um, <clears throat> the application proposes seven flats aimed at providing accommodation for 21 people, but there are only five parking spaces for these seven households. Seven households meets, needs, means seven sets of visitors. Where are they all going to park, particularly in the evenings and, in the, uh, and at weekends? They're going to try and park in, in the neighbouring roads of Macorber Avenue, Greatfields Drive and Newling Close. There are no parking restrictions in the evenings in these roads. There's a vet's practice on the corner of Peelteath Road and Newling Close. It can get busy. Often there are more cars that are looking to park in the vet's uh, car park than the car park can handle. So people park in Newling Close, particularly on a Saturday. Sometimes there is nowhere to park. How would the denial of the council's on-street parking management scheme help residents in evenings uh, and at weekends? Importantly, impatient drivers looking for somewhere to park speed up our close. We have families and children in our close. This proposal would further increase the number of vehicle movements within Newling Close, which would increase the risks to children. Seven households means seven sets of deliveries. These would be food deliveries, parcel deliveries. 
where are the delivery vans going to park? <clears throat> if they drive into 42 Peel Teeth Road, they're going to have to back out onto a busy main road. If they back in, they will have to, that they'll be holding up the traffic. Or they could just park on the pavement. All of these options present dangers and pe to pedestrians and cyclists. If they're delivering to uh, an upstairs flat, then these vans could be causing an obstruction for 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time. Pilty Throw can be a busy road. It's a bus route. It's an ambulance route. The junction with Greatfields uh, Drive is almost opposite. With a van parked on the pavement, there will be a lot of distractions for motorists. It would be dangerous for pedestrians, motorists, and particularly cyclists. Pollution. With seven households and seven sets of visitors and deliveries, there'll be a lot more comings and goings. There'll be more congestion, more pollution. There'll be brake wear, tire wear, particulates, uh, that will decrease air quality in the local area, which already exceeds uh, WHO limits. That's according to data from the Imperial College London. This planning application makes no reference to low-carbon heating or low-carbon he low cooling. If the heating is by fossil fuels, then it will be incompatible with net zero targets and climate change mitigation. Overdominance. This is an image taken from the back of one Ewing Close. So it shows the outlook. This <coughs> is an approximation of the proposed development based on the latest plans which have been revised. It gives an indication of the bulk and the size and the massing and the loss of light. It would adversely affect the well-being of families in neighbouring properties for decades to come. Even two storeys would be visually intrusive. Previous planning p applications have been refused for two-storey buildings, both at 42 Peelteeth Road and 44 Peelteeth Road. Precedents have been set. Loss of privacy. The sighting of the windows in the plan show that uh, a number of neighbouring properties would suffer from loss of privacy. So, parking issues, risks to children, risks to pedestrians, cyclists, pollution, overdominance, loss of privacy. Thank you. Your time's up. Thank you very much. Um, just before you leave, uh, I'd just like to, any councillors like to ask you any questions. Would you like to ask any questions to the petition? No? Thank you very much. You can Thank turn you. that button off for me. That would be helpful. Sir. Thank you. Okay, applicant is here, Gary Wine. Is the applicant here? No. Councillor's here. Hello, Roy. Would you like to come and take a seat? Councillor Tam Dahl. Better to get that right. As you know, because you're so well at adverse speaking, you only have three minutes, I'm afraid. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. And thank you... John, uh, wonderful presentation, especially the graphics. Listen, don't want to take up too much of your time. It's a horrible, horrible development. Here we have a developer who has absolutely showing no regards for planning law, the community, the rules, what we're going to build. It, you know, there's a Christmas carol where the little lad asks for more. Well, this guy's asking for the garden, the sink, the, the neighbouring house as well. It's a horrible, horrible development. Um, I'm not going to go through the points that... Uh, uh, Mr. Malcolm raised because he raised them very well. Um, on the parking, I do understand uh, with the mayor's new plan, it does meet the requirement of five parking spaces. But we live in the real world. So I think sometime when we look at policy and we look at that lovely word, what harm would it do? I think we need to bring reality into that conversation as well. 21 people, five parking spaces, it's not going to happen. Uh, we've campaigned long and hard around this area to get the parking management schemes in because we had a horrible time with 
unfortunately with Hillingdon Hospital nearby, wonderful hospital, people would always park down these streets. So that's why we've got PMSs down all these streets, because otherwise they were chock-a-block. Um, and I can see this happening again with this development. There was another recent development in the same road where we had no parking available to residents. I now get sort of regular phone calls from the local estate agent who's managing this property, asking whether if I can help them get parking. It was quite clear at the planning committee, no parking ever. And yet, a year down the road, they're asking us for it. So, committee, and well done, officers as well. There's a few more points I think we can pick out, but I think five is enough. It's enough space on the refusal form, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Roy, for your time. Any questions for the councillor? Nope. Thank you very much. Right. So, I'll open to the floor. Councillor Tuckwell. Councillor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, thank you to the petitioner and ward councillor for uh, sharing us uh, your thoughts this evening. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start on the outset. I, I don't like the scheme. Um, by any way, shape or form. We have five very strong um, refusal reasons listed. The bulk, the overbearing impact on Newland Close, which we've heard about. Um, in fact, there's no family units. We've got a very large plot here. It's you know, a crying shame that we, we are going to develop it. We're not developing sort of family-sized units. Um, we can't reach a legal agreement, and there is a very dangerous crossover. Um, what I'd just like to explore with officers is, is the point that was made, made around parking. And I know we, it talks about the p rating and everything else, but for the, the reasons that we heard from the, very eloquently from the petitioner, is there an opportunity to put a sick refusal reason around parking displacement, parking stress, or something along those lines? So I'd be really interested to hear if that is a possibility or not. Okay, who wants to take that? Joanna? Okay. okay. Do you beg your pardon, Alan. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, yes, the development would be in accordance with the London Plan parking standards. Uh, five units in a location of PTAL 3 would allow a maximum of 5.2 car parking spaces. So, in that respect, yes, it's tied with policy. Should the application be recommended for refusal, for approval, sorry, Chairman, uh, the Highway Authority would require a Section 106 agreement prohibiting people for joining the nearby parking management scheme. Um, and people would know that uh, if they're looking for a house with car parking, then this is not for them. It's also PTAL 3, but all that's really rather academic. There is a highways reason for refusal, and that's with regards to the height of the wall and planting at the egress onto Peel Teeth Road. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alan. Does that answer your question? Would you like to come back? Just, just come back with a short yeah. supplementary. So I, I get that we've got five spaces squeezed into the plot, and I will use the word squeezed into, but I think I'm, I'm linking back to the, the point that was made by the petitioner, which is around all the ancillary, you know, the visitors, the delivery vehicles that are arriving. Is there anything which could be added which could um, you know, at least highlight the issue that whilst we've got the five spaces, there's all the ancillary activity which will go around that. It's a very tight sort of site, a very busy road, uh, and we could see that would cause, that would add to the additional safety concerns that were already included as part of Condition 5. Yeah, fine, I'll get Ros to answer that for you. Thank you, Chairman. I do understand the concerns, but, you know, essentially when the parking standards are set, you know, these kind of factors are, are thought of. I would be very concerned about adding a parking reason because I just don't think we could sustain it. And I think, you know, if you start adding um, kind of weak reasons in there, it sort of undermines your, you know, your strong argument point. Thank you. Councillor Gohill. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm really glad this came in front of the committee because, to be honest, it's riddled with problems. Um, from th throughout the application, actually. Um, I really sort of sympathise with those who live on Newland Close, especially numbers one to three, because what, bit, what this property could potentially turn into would just lead to absolute misery for the, for the residents over there. I mean, the, the sort of bulk, the scale um, of, the, of the proposed plans are just, just sort of out of, 
out of character for the entire for the entire area. Um, the and you, you know you'd think with a property of this size, if they were putting forward um, a development, they'd want to fit in something for family homes, which is something we do desperately need um, in Hillingdon, and it's a shame that they didn't include those um, in the application. Um, yeah, and, and don't not not to mention the legal problems <laughs> that that surround this. Um, I'd be very happy to support um, to propose re um, officers' recommendations to refuse this application. Thank you very much. Councillor Sansibori. Yes. The officer of uh, report is very clear. You know, the five parking rule may be sufficient for some other area, but of course, the particular area because Hillington Hospital is very close to that, and most of the time ambulance must be going there. So I think it is not a good good to recommend this application. So I will I will support officer's recommendation for refusal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to suggest the same as uh, Councillor Sansapuri to support the officer's recommendation and second, second it, but right. it's so been done. Thanks. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? No? I was in the mic. The next item is number 10, St. Luke's Close. Yes. yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so, this application is coming before members again after it was deferred last month at committee on the 1st of November, um, and we undertook a site visit on the 9th of November um, on committee's instruction. We visited the front of the site, um, the application property itself, and helpfully, neighbours provided access to the rear of number 12 and number 15, that was, those two properties were discussed at length at the previous meeting. So we have the same plans in front of you, um, just the constraints, existing floor plans, existing um, front and rear elevations, existing sections, um, and the proposed plan, which I think I'll just keep it on this for a moment. Um, lots of discussion was had around um, the importance of the other end of the terrace. So the other end of the terrace having a what we would describe a similar side extension existing. So number 15 at the other end has a side extension of the same width as proposed here. The main difference between those two is the fact that this also has a rear extension. Um, the rear extension is fully policy compliant, but the side extension matching the other end is not policy compliant. So we had a lot of discussion about that. Um, just explaining those points. Now, officers would just say this is a technical breach on one point, so it, do, it fails to meet that part of the MHD1. Um, but the development plan as a whole, we're asserting that we think that it complies. It balances out that group, um, and we think it's acceptable in this particular instance for the reasons explained in the report. Um, we also just confirmed the relationship and distance to the boundary so there's a 2.8 meter distance retained on that side um, and we also confirmed sorry let me just turn to this image um, that the rear is policy compliant in terms of its depth in terms of its distance to the neighbor and the 45 degree line being retained um, there were some couple of other points that were raised that are relevant um, such as the depth of the existing stores that run between the houses um, and the depth of the conservatory next door being 4.5 metres deep. I won't sort of labour those points because we have included them in detail in the report. Um, so I'll just turn again to the uh, bird's eye view that gives you that image of the terrace as a whole and this front elevation, um, which we saw, we believe, balances the end. Officers would just like to raise one more point, which is if, they, if this were to be refused on that technical breach, um, a new application could come in with an extension that is exactly three metres wide that would be fully policy compliant. But the result in terms of that view 
would be that the terrace would, to a degree, be lopsided because the existing one at 15 would be wider than the one proposed here. But officers would just like to make that point, and that concludes my presentation. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Make it nice and concise. Um, Mr. Bob Allen, is anybody is here? Oh, fine. Sorry. Yes, yeah, fine. Of course. So just uh, address who you are to the committee, and uh, obviously you spoke last time, so you've got your five minutes and traffic light system. Okay. Hello again. Um, as a reminder, my name is Cathy. Um, I live at number 12, St Luke Close, so next door to number 10. Um, and I've been a resident of St Luke Close for the majority of my life. Um, firstly, I'd just really like to say genuinely a big thank you to everyone. The fact that you all came and took the time to visit, um, you, you know, I was astounded and I'm really, really appreciative, so thank you very much. Um, and also, whilst um, I'm just saying thank you, I'd like to thank Mr Allen for um, his time and efforts in overseeing the petitions for me, which has been really helpful. Um, having reviewed the notes on the site visit with the residents, we'd like to highlight a few points that were asked to be clarified. The proposal is not policy compliant. The argument for which is to max match the extension number 15 that we're looking at, that's built 35 years ago. We would argue that you can see, and we hope you saw from the site visit, that it doesn't look unbalanced um, and that actually any additional builds would make that corner look particularly overcrowded. It was also asked to be noted that this proposal differs from the existing side extension number 15 as a two-storey rear extension is also proposed, which number 15 does not have. This would be the first rear extension to be sited at floor level within this particular terrace group and it would spoil the straight terrace line at the rear. Hence, we believe there's no relevance to Society number 15 in the proposal. It was noted that there were numerous cars on the street during the daytime visit. There's been a lot of talk about parking already this, e uh, this evening. And availability in the evening in our street is even more limited. It was confirmed that the extension would not require an increase in parking provision, as there is no change of use. However, a new house or a change of use would likely require additional parking. This was the key reason for refusal when a new house was proposed at the site and previously rejected. One key question from residents on this point, please. If there is no change of use for the property, what is the need for all the extra bathrooms and bedrooms? Surely this has to mean more people, which equals more parking requirements. Lastly, it was confirmed that the property would remain in use as a single family dwelling and that planning permission would be required for a change of use to an HMO or to convert the property into flats. And I'll come back to this point shortly. Since the site visit, there's a few updates we'd like to update you on. Second uh, petition we did, we collected 27 signatures and throughout the collection, no one could understand why the in, uh, proposal wasn't initially rejected. We did discuss um, the conversation about balancing the terrace and parking being unaffected. Both of these were received with real strong objections from neighbours. And our assumption is that as the proposal hasn't changed, the feelings of those additional 50 other residents who signed the first uh, petition haven't changed either. We mentioned at the last meeting our concerns that services built over 70 years ago would not be able to cope with the significant increase in the number of bathrooms in particular in the terrace. Remembering this terrace is only four houses. A few weeks ago, we again had a foul drain blockage at the end of the run, and this resulted in a two and a half foot pool of uh, faecal matter that had to be cleared. Um, there's no indication of the drainage run in the planning application plans, but from the manhole positions in the other gardens of the terrace, we are sure that the proposed wraparound extension will be built over the manhole, and that's really not a wise idea considering the issues we have. And then lastly, having spoken with several of the residents in the close, we are convinced that since the repurchase of number 10, the house is being used multiple occupancy, although perhaps somewhat coincidentally there happen to be less people currently. This has since been reported and is being investigated by the council. It also raises questions such as does the property have relevant certification and is it up to standard such as um, to be used as HMO? Um, especially as there was a quote last time saying that the extension would be a good opportunity to bring the rest of the house up to date with building regulations. I really hope that the efforts um, from residents via the petitions and these meeting attendants show how strongly we feel um, and that we really do not want this built. 
Um, we hope we've also highlighted our reasons as to why this shouldn't be approved. Um, more importantly, regardless of the current status, I think from the plans, it's obvious that the future plan is for this property to be used as an HMO. And tonight is your opportunity to show your support to the residents. Should this be approved, we believe it will be just a matter of time until we're back together again, having to resolve issues from HMO op uh, occupancy and stretch utilities. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have any questions? No? Thank you very much. You can stay seat. Uh, I believe we have a written response from the applicant here. Thank you, Chairman. Dear committee members, my planning application has been made in good faith to increase the size of a family home. The existing house is situated on a large plot of land providing a substantial total of 366 square metres of garden and parking amenities. We would like to build on 50 square metres of this outside space a small part which is otherwise unused. The extension has been designed very carefully, mindful of the relevant planning policies and the neighbour's amenities. This is supported by the planning officer, Zara Raza's report relating to the application. The works will also provide us with the opportunity to venerate the existing house, bringing it up to date with current building regulations and making it more sustainable. This is to confirm I won't be able to attend and wish to read my writ written representation. Yours faithfully, Nermal Oja. Thank you for that. Right, Councillor Chandel, would you like to? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee, once again. Um, thank you for the for the petitioner. Uh, she laid out the points very well. So um, once again, I'm not going to go through it. I, I'm just going to raise one point first of all. The developer once again has made a comment that he's made this development mindful of the relevant planning, laws, building regulations, everything. Well, he hasn't, because it doesn't comply with policy. Now, we use that word harm. What harm does it cause? Well, it does cause harm because it's not with policy. Now, if he was mindful and he was considerate of neighbours, then he would have built, put forward an application which met all all parts of building regs, etc. But he hasn't. So on that part, I don't understand. Uh, it's a shame he's not here, or the committee, I'm sure, would have questioned him on that point. We're basing... Officers are basing accepting this proposal on something which was built, I think, 35 years ago. Well, the laws were different then. Uh, just because we've got monstrosity at the end, end of our terrace, well, we're justifying it by building another monstrosity on the other side because it balances up. I don't think so. Laws have changed quite considerably. As you can see also from the petition, I mean, 82 signatories. Now, people don't go around signing pieces of paper for nothing, really don't. Uh, so there is real concern from the surrounding neighbours as well that this kind of development, once again, especially this property, and we've got a history of it, again and again and again. Let's put some more on. And it brings me back to that Christmas carol I mentioned before. Could I have some more? Well, again, they're asking for more. They don't need that. They actually don't need it. If it came with the policy, if the developer was mindful of the relevant uh, planning uh, laws, then he wouldn't have put it in. But this is what we see with developers. I want a bit more. I want a bit more. On the pretense that, listen, the chances are if it goes to appeal, if it's goes it's refused, well, the planning inspector might accept it. So they're asking for more. When they could just as easy, and they know the rules and regulations, put plans through which meet regulations. Then there shouldn't be an issue. Once again, we've got a developer here who doesn't really care. Thank you, committee. Thank you, councillor. Does anybody want to ask any questions to the councillor? No? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I just make it quite clear that it's the application that's before you, any references to HMO with Article 4 in the area is irrelevant, I'm afraid. Um, so, um, I'll open it to the floor. Yes, Councillor Tuckman. Thank you, Mr Chairman, and uh, thank you to the petitioners, the applicant whose written statement we had, and uh, Councillor Chamdell for, for, for their thoughts. Okay. Where do we go with this one? So, 
again a thank you to the officers for organising the site visit. It was a bit chilly, but um, it was it was well worthwhile. I think what I said at the last uh, meeting um, was I don't see how deviating away from policy without a firm balance coming back, um, as, as I can't see on this one. My mind hasn't been changed following the site visit. Um, two things come down to, one is we can clearly see, and it is in the report several times, it does deviate from, from the appropriate policy, I think it's DMH D1, it does deviate from that. Um, and it's quite clear that it says that there is a material consideration. Um, I have a contrary view to that material consideration, um, given that the, it's attempting, the material consideration is attempting to balance the block from one end that was constructed back in 1987, I think it is. So I, I have a contrary view to that. I believe it's overly wide. It's not subordinate to number 10. Uh, and for that reason it is quite contrary to that policy. It has been said, you know, that it does uh, balance out. Um, and you can see from that picture, yeah, it probably does add a new dimension to it. But in terms of, you know, impacting on the street scene, I, 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 don't, I don't see that. I, I really don't. So I'll be interested to hear what, what other members around the table have got to say. But I think I've sort of like, sort of shared my feeling about this application. Um, again, it comes down to that point about material consideration, which I have a different opinion to what officers have, have portrayed in the report. So I'll be interested to hear what other members have got to say and then contribute to the debate, to the debate a bit later on. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Councillor Gohill. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you to the committee for organising the site visit. And it was nice to see Fiona there, who explained a lot of the questions that I that I had. Um, I would like to echo a bit of what Councillor Tuckwell just said um, in that my my opinion was after having visited the site, um, I, I struggled to see why, I, I struggled to see why, um, why we should go ahead with a, an application that defies policy not just by a small amount but by 1.3 three meters um, and I, I'm aware I'm aware that the planning um, the planning policy is guidance and not not law in that sense but you know there's, there's a reason we put these policies in place and and where there might have been some sort of justification if it was maybe 0 0.2 0 0.3 um, meters out um, there might have been some there might have been some sort of leeway there I just think 1.3 meters is far too much and you know, to have the grounds of it on the basis that you know there was X dwelling on the opposite side of the opposite end of the opposite end of the road that you know had it done 35 years ago is not it's not fair enough. You know, if we applied that to if we applied that to everything at a certain point 35 years ago, there wouldn't have been seat belts in cars. You know, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have them. Um, I, I know it's a it's a similar I know it's a you know not I know it's a completely different topic there, but. The point is that we have policies there for a reason, and, and so I, I'd like to understand why um, officers put so much weight on that material consideration, because I, in my opinion, I don't think there should be. Um, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Fiona, for, that day, for the visit. Uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Gohill. Uh, the 1.3 meter is quite far within extra. Also, I pick up other day, that day, when we look the picture, the road is clear. But when we visit there, my con second concern is the parking space. So could you explain <coughs> or about these two things? Thank you. Okay, Councillor, I'm just trying to take everybody and then I'll get officers to respond back to the points that have been made. Has anybody else got anything else to say? Councillor Mann, do you have anything? Yep. Thank you for everyone, for their views, especially for the petitioners and, and in, in local councillors for the ward. Um, again, I share a similar opinion to um, Councillor Tuckwell, Councillor Gohill and Councillor Singh in terms of I am still, like my 
previous suggestion I made when we had this come up in the previous meeting, I'm still struggling to understand how something can defy policy but still be approved. Um, I would like the officers to offer us um, a little bit more insight into um, especially comparing it to the development on the opposite end. Uh, anything else? Anybody else? No? Yeah, okay, sir. Yeah, but, uh, before we take a decision, I think the officer has uh, to give us advice what will happen if it goes to appeal. Do we have a valid reason or what will the appeal, where we stand there? Thank you, Councillor Samoy. That's, uh, that's everything. I think everybody's had their say. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, is absolutely right. We have to tease all of this out, which we will. So over to you, Roz. Thank you, Chairman. So I think it's really important that we're clear that planning isn't just a tick box exercise. So we have to make a professional planning judgment, a planning balance judgment. So it isn't enough just to refuse something on a technical breach. If you want to refuse it because it breaches that technical point, you need to be very clear that there's some demonstrable harm. So Councillor Tuckwell um, did speak about um, the proportions of the extension with the, the host property. Um, I accept his points. However, my own view is that we can't focus solely on the property. We have to look at the established character and appearance of the area and look at it in a sort of a wholesome, wholesome manner, really, to take that, that planning balance judgment. So obviously we've talked a lot about the extension at the other end of the terrace. I accept it was historic, but the point that officers are making is that, that is, it is there, it exists, it forms part of the character and in officers view bearing in mind that existing character we just don't feel that there is harm from this proposed extension we really don't feel that an appeal we would be able to defend to be honest with you okay thank you Ros um, I'm going to get Glenn in now Glenn I'd just to give the committee some guidance please uh, thank you chairman um, <coughs> There's clearly been an awful lot of work gone into this application, and there's been a very detailed site visit. There were 17 paragraphs in the report detailing issues that arose on that site visit. So I think officers have given a very full response to each and every issue that's been raised by members. Members are entitled to differ from officers' views, of course. That's your, that's your prerogative, that's your function. I just echo the advice that's been given. If you're going to refuse this, and officers are defending your decision on appeal, which we will do, you need to be very clear in your instructions to us on what planning harm you, you envisage if this is approved. And that needs to be able to stand up at a planning, at a, at a planning appeal. So I, I think maybe, Chairman, to see how the debate develops a bit further, then I'm happy to come back in later on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn. So, as a committee now, you've been given all the advice. Um, so it's really down to you guys. You have to now... Yeah, yeah, I'd like to come back on a, on a couple of points there, and I, I, I get the, I, I see that the pickle that we're in, um, but I, I think it does come down to um, a, a different, you know, officers have, have a view. I'm getting the sense that the committee has as a contrary view to that. Um, when it comes down to harm, um, I think you could certainly look the relationship between the the, the proposed extension and the host dwelling as outlined in the report, is, is a clear failure to be support, subordinate with the host dwelling. Um, it's overly wide, again, that's in the report, um, and it is contrary to, to that policy. And again, I'll come back down to the point, you know, this, the policy that we're talking about here was adopted in 2020. Um, I think had this, had this development happened um, a couple of years before that or, or since, then, then yeah, we'd, we'd probably have a different conversation. But I think when we're, we're looking at sort of, you know, the actual application and the the impact it has on its on its direct neighbour, I, I still don't have the same view that officers have that it, it should also be taken into account something that's happened several houses down to to address that that terrace block. So that would be my view in terms of you know the, the harm that it would have, um, and is a, is a breach of policy. So. I don't know if anybody else and any of my colleagues would, would wish to sort of add to that comment. Councillor Gogill. Thank you, Chairman. I'm sorry, Bob. Um, I absolutely agree with what um, Councillor Tuckwell just said there. Um, you know, the, there's a reason, as I said just previously, there is a reason that we do 
bringing these policies and I know it's something that comes kind of comes out on on balance and you know I think it was Fiona who mentioned something that if it if we did go to appeal on this and they brought something back in where they reduced it by 1.3 meters it would look lopsided well the kind of thought process there was that you know hopefully the hopefully the petitioner doesn't bring in something that looks lopsided on the street scene because that would affect how his house looks or his family home looks on that on that street but again I don't think I could adequately comment on that unless it comes in front of me as another proposal so I'm looking at the proposal as it is and as it is it as it is it goes against it goes against the the policy which you know it if we're talking about harm we're talking about um, we're talking about setting precedents for the wider area as well and and you know why well oh God, everyone's, everyone's written down something there um, <laughs> and you know what well whilst we're talking about that um, if you're setting something if you're setting a scene something where you know something's happened 35 years ago and then that sets a precedent to do something op on the opposite side where we might find that happening or cropping up elsewhere in the in the area which would lead to far more of these applications coming into the committee um, well, my, my original point stands that you know we have these policies there for a reason it's not a new policy and the the dwelling that was erected before wasn't wasn't something that was erected just before the policy came in place, and so I, I am really, really struggling to see why the material consideration is giving as much weight as it has been given. Thank you, Councillor Child. Councillor um, Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to echo what my fellow councillors were saying. To be honest, uh, that uh, everything which I wanted to say have, has already been mentioned by majority of the councillors in the in the committee so therefore uh, I agree with what is being said thank you so can I, can council Tuckle, can you just make it quite clear what is the reason for refusal please so officers can see whether that is a reason yeah and I'll be interested to hear Glenn's view as well when we when we get to that because obviously we want to make sure that we're we're shored up you know for whatever decision this committee makes we want to make sure that we're, we're shored up um, but I think for me what I would be looking at is um, certainly and again I'm just echoing what it actually already says in the report you know it's bulk it's scale it's overly wide and it fails to be subordinate with the host dwelling so Ros, are you going to come back and tell me whether that is acceptable as a reason for refusal? And Glenn, can you then follow up, uh, up please? So, essentially what we're saying is um, it's harmful to the host dwelling um, in terms of the, the width and the scale and the, and the sort of resulting bulk. Um, you can put it forward for, the, for all the reasons we've discussed, and I don't want to sort of <laughs> do it to death, but, um, you know, I think you have to take into account the wider street scene, so... Obviously, we've had a great big debate about it, um, but I feel I, I personally feel it won't stand up um, to appeal. Okay, Glenn, would you like to follow that, please? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I would only ever advise committees that a decision they were proposing to take was unlawful if it was clearly wrong. Um, what's happened with this application? There's been a very detailed consideration. There's been a site visit. It's a very detailed report from officers. Members are, as I said before, free to differ from officers' recommendations. That's your function as, as a committee. Um, what I will say here is the, the grounds that are put forward by Councillor Tuckwell are certainly arguable. There is a real risk you will not win on appeal, but officers' function is to then argue that case for you on appeal if that's the decision you make there. Um, I couldn't say this as I, I say, if, this was, if these were unarguable grounds, I'd be saying so. These are, these are grounds I can put forward on appeal. Whether I win or not is another matter. I think the committee just needs to be clear on that. So this isn't one of those cases where I would say I'm afraid it's not a decision that committee can, read, can reach. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Glenn. Right, so basically officers are advising committee that your refusal reason is weak, okay? Um, and that, but we can challenge it on that basis, okay? So it's up to committee to decide if you want to put... Um, yes, Councillor Cartwell. I just have to point out that's not what the legal officer said. Oh. Didn't I, said the, that, I did say, say that I said, I don't want to get in a weak. debate. Yeah, we, the planning, office, planning, planning officers yeah. 
I, I hang on, that's, that's, the record, just yeah, that's just make this very clear. Planning officers have advised you that the recommendation is weak, okay? Legal has advised you, as our, what we are as a committee, that we judge things before us, and if we wish to refuse that as a committee, then they will, they will fight that case against appeal, okay? So I hope that's clear. I'm not trying to undermine anybody's point, what you're trying to say. Yes, Councillor Gohill. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Glenn and Roslyn, for everything that you've uh, everything you've mentioned. Of, you know, I've taken all of that into account, um, but I still I don't think I could support this application. So I'd like to move um, to go against officer, officer's recommendation and uh, move to reject uh, this application. Okay. So I have Councillor Gohill up for refusal. Obviously, Councillor Tuckwell. Yes, I think I've um, made my points clear, yep. so I think it would be only right to second Councillor Gohill's um, motion to refuse. Okay, so what do we have before us as a committee? Obviously, Councillor Mann, this is new to you. This is the first time we've had something like this, way. and to Councillor Gohill. Um, so before us, we have a reason for refusal. We will now vote on that reason for refusal. So I will ask committee to show a show your hand and show whether you are in agreement for refusal. And from there, we will then determine whether, with the voting, what the situation will be. So can all those in, uh, who are in favour of refusal please indicate? OK, so that's three. All those um, that are against? and all those abstaining, which is four. Okay, so on that note, it has gone through, uh, so the application has been refused. Okay, thank you very much. Right, so we go on to the next item, which is item eight, which is Warren Road. Um, who's that? Is that Nisha? After you, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Item eight, rear of 25 to 31 Warren Road, Ickenham. This application proposes the erection of four two-storey detached houses with habitable accommodation in the roof space, garages, and associated landscaping, parking, and installation of a vehicle crossover. Here is the location plan. The site is located to the north of Warren Road and encompasses part of the former rear gardens of numbers 25 to 31 Warren Road. To the east of the site is Hayfort Drive, which is where the access point is being proposed. Bird's eye view for context. As can be seen from the constraints plan, the site is not subject to any heritage designations but does contain trees that are protected by Tree Preservation Orders 740 and 793. The site is designated within the Hillington Air Quality Management Area Flood Zone 1 and has a public transport accessibility level rating of 1B. Here is the proposed site plan. If members can make a note of the proposed access point, which I'm pointing to here, and then the nearest neighbouring property, which is number 22 Hayfolk Drive. Um, and I'm going to be showing you photos of those viewpoints in the following slides. So this is the proposed access point from Hayfolk Drive. This is the closest neighbouring property that I pointed to on the site plan. And this is just the street scene of Hayfolk Drive. This is the application site. Policy DMH6 of the local plan states that there is a presumption against the loss of gardens due to the need to maintain local character, amenity space and biodiversity. However, the policy does state that limited scale of backland development may be acceptable to specific criteria. In this case, it is considered that the proposed development would pass the exceptionality test of policy DMH6 for the reasons discussed in section 7.01 of the committee report. On balance, the principle of introducing four detached dwellings on land originally forming the rear gardens of numbers 25 to 31 Warren Road is considered to be acceptable by officers. 
In reaching this position, due rate has been afforded to the fact that the existing properties, if I just go back to the proposed site plan, so these all these properties on Hayfoot Drive, they were built on the former rear gardens of these properties on Warren Road. And then over here, you have this small housing estate, um, Walnut Tree Close, and they were built on the former rear gardens of the properties on Woodstock Drive. Um, so the precedent has already been established in this particular unique situation. Okay, here is the street scene elevation of the proposed dwellings. The properties have been designed to match or be similar to the existing properties on Hayfort Drive in terms of their architectural style, their roof profiles, their massing and their detached form. Here are the proposed plans and elevations for the house on plot 1, plot 2, plot 3 and plot 4. All of the proposed dwellings will contain four bedrooms with an additional room within the attic that could be flexibly used as an additional bedroom. The internal and external amenity space provision of all the proposed dwellings would far exceed the minimum requirements of policy D6 of the London Plan and policies DMHB 16 and DMHB 18 of the local plan. So it should be noted that all the category A and B trees at the site would be retained as part of the proposed development. The council's tree officer has raised no objection to the loss of the category C trees due to their limited health and visual amenity value. To help mitigate the loss of the trees that would be removed, 13 new trees are being proposed and this would be secured by condition if members were minded to approve this application this evening. For the reasons discussed in section 7.08 of the committee report, it is considered that the proposed development would not cause unreasonable harm to the living conditions of neighbouring occupiers in compliance with policy DMHB 11 part B of the local plan. The Council's High Rates Officer has raised no objection in principle to the proposed new access opening on Hayfoot Drive. Um, I'm just pointing to it there. The proposed access point would be 4.8 metres wide at its connection point, which is of a sufficient width to allow two vehicles to safely pass each other. The threat path analysis that's shown on the slide shows that the Council's refuse vehicle would be able to enter and leave the site in forward gear, which is the recommended practice on highway safety grounds. The proposed dwellings on plots 1 to 3, so this one, this one and this one, would be provided with three on-site car parking spaces, one within the garage and two on the front driveway. Plot 4 would be provided with four on-site car parking spaces, two on the front driveway and two within this garage here. Um, so it's acknowledged by officers that the proposed on-site car parking provision would exceed the local and regional car parking policy standards. However, the Council's Highways Officer has commented that in this specific case, this excess is considered acceptable because it reduces the potential for parking displacement on the surrounding streets. The proposal would deliver a high-quality housing development which would widen the choice of family-sized housing within the borough. Um, as mentioned earlier, all of them are four-bedroom plus units, um, which constitutes as family-sized dwellings. Officers therefore recommend that planning permission is granted subject to conditions. Um, there is an addendum that's been circulated to members that includes informative I-15, which is to control of environmental nuisance from construction works. That's been missed from the committee report, so it will be attached to the decision notice if m members were minded to approve it this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. That's lovely. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have Mr. David Smith. Would you like to come to the table? Okay, that's, that's that's fine. I think you've got you've got a slideshow of yourself, haven't you? Photographs. You got some photographs. Did that show well, it in I've there? Seen the slide show, but I've seen the five photographs that have been um, put up. 
Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. So whenever you're ready. Sorry. Would you like me to show your slides? Yeah. Okay. Could you just tell me next so I know when to flip through them? Thank you. If you just nod, that would be. Thing. <laughs> When you're ready, to press the button and then we go. Mr Chair, thank you for the opportunity to address the committee. I'm David Smith of 19, Haythrop Drive. Um, our opposition to this development is quite clear and it's widespread. There are 58 people who've signed the, uh, the petition and 28 letters of objection plus um, a letter from the Economic Residents Association, and they don't often object these days, but they have in this case. Um, can I refer the committee directly to um, the policy DMH6, which has, is, I believe, of relevance here? Um, this is in the report at page 66 at the bottom, <coughs> and it says in the last paragraph, there is a presumption against the loss of gardens but only in exceptional cases a limited scale may be acceptable. So one has to consider, I would suggest, what is exceptional and therefore what is not. Um, exceptional is not defined in planning law, therefore this word has to be given its ordinary and natural everyday meaning. So I could suggest to you that exceptional could mean unusual, or unprecedented, or abnormal, or extraordinary. This development is none of those. And there's no way that it can be dressed up to suggest that it's any more than a backfill development. It's not exceptional. If that's the case, the whole thing fails in my respectful uh, submission. <clears throat> the policy also provides that the top of page 67 I'm referring to, uh, Mr Chair, that the uh, fact that there's a, a long access road would not normally be acceptable. And that's precisely what we have at Haythrop Drive, which was the point I made earlier about the photograph showing only part of Haythrop Drive, because the photo that uh, the officers kindly put up for me now shows the entrance into Haythrop Drive if you could go to the second one, that's from the opposite direction into Haythrop Drive. If you could show the third one, that's showing the west access into the proposed entrance to the site. So you can see from these photos and the plan, it's not a short road, it's a long road, and it shouldn't be permitted as an access um, to a major development such as this. Haythrop Drive is 150 metres long. I measured it with a surveyor's wheel with another resident. It's only 4.8 metres wide, so it's not a wide road. If you could show the next photograph, and the next one, please, you'll see two cars parked there. That's a short distance away from the proposed site, and it would be a challenge to get a heavy goods vehicle past those vehicles. If the road is 4.8 metres wide, an HGV, when I looked it up, I just googled it to find the width, HGVs are about 2.5 metres in width. That will take up at least half the road. That's why I suggest it's a challenge to get a heavy goods vehicle past those cars where residents or their guests, or visitors, or even tradesmen might wish to park. The Chair, do you wish me to pause a moment? No, sorry, you want to the point yes. Um, the, the numbers 20, 21, and 22 are at the end of the drive. They have no pavement. There's no barrier to traffic. So in my view, uh, with respect, there is a danger here to pedestrians and others the vehicles themselves coming into Haythrop Drive will pass 10 residential properties. I know at least of seven residents who use their home for work who will be disturbed by the passage of a constant stream of HGVs, concrete mixers, 
um, deliver, uh, uh, lorries that are used to clear the site, that type of thing. And so the policy says no unnecessarily long access roads, and that's what we have here, as you can see from the photographs that we've supplied. Um, and so I think I'm coming to the end, but we, um, we, we say that this development is not compliant with your policy and should be refused. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, I had to rush. No, no, no. It, it, it's a knack. A lot of us have the same problem when we make speeches, do, so don't worry. Um, does anybody have any questions? To the, yeah, there you go. Councillor Tuckwell. Councillor Gardner. Thank you for uh, taking us through uh, your thoughts there this evening. I, I've just got one question, really. It's on that point you just, you just finished on, actually. Um, clearly, you can see that it's, it's quite a narrow road. Yes. I, I know the road as well. Um, the, the point that you're making is, is, is that in relation to the construction, and what would your view be if this was approved in relation to you know, it just being regular houses at the end of the road? Do you think that would be a problem, or is it just during the construction phase that you're referring to? Yeah. <coughs> Roger, thank you for the question. It's a very good one. The photographs show the narrowness of the road. The photographs show where residents' cars have been parked and the problem with HGVs passing it. To answer your question, I don't believe that we would have a problem with uh, vehicles using Haythlock Drive once the homes have been built. It's the problem is how do we get there using a long access road that the policy says should not be permitted. That is the whole crux of the matter here when you consider the points, uh, the councillor, that I, I made a moment ago. So no problem once it's built, but a big problem, a huge problem for the residents given that the management plan suggests this could take <coughs> excuse me, not 12 days or 12 weeks but 12 months of aggravation in our drive. You imagine what it would be like for residents trying to get into the drive or get out of it if they're faced with large HGVs trying to make their way up the drive. And in one of the photos, you saw a long entrance to the drive. There's usually residents and guests' cars parked all the way along that, that part. So it would be a nightmare. I wouldn't want to do it if faced with a 20-ton lorry in front of me trying to come the other way. My wife's having nightmares about it. She's not a confident driver. And to ask her, oh, well, can you reverse back when you're confronted with an HGV, I think she'd have kittens. But th th that's Thank you. my Thank answer you. for the question. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Gohill. Thank you, Chair. Um, before I ask my question, are you, sorry, remind me, are you representing the Resident Association or do you live near Heathrop or live or on Heathrop Drive? You see the vehicle in the photograph uh, yeah. there, Councillor, that's mine. Okay. So um, okay that, I, that, I that. live there. Okay. I live at number 19. So um, one of the officers, Nisa, I believe, um, mentioned that there were a few other properties that had been built on the back of, um, in, in a similar way to the proposed uh, application. Um, I was just wondering if you could, obviously those had to be built over a particular period of time as well, and those have been now been built. Could you, uh, I don't know how long you've lived in the area, but perhaps you could uh, comment on the impact that made to you, because that would help us make a decision as to the impact which is your which is your biggest uh, concern yeah. <coughs> excuse me number 19 um, was part of the original development in Haythrop Drive I'm just checking the, uh, the date uh, when those houses were, were finished and to answer your question as briefly as I can I've lived there since 1996 three of the houses in Haythrop Drive were built three years later right next door to where I live at number 19. Numbers 20, 21, 22 were built after the main part of the drive. Now, I, most of the days was not there, but my wife and my, my two boys were. It was horrendous for them having to put up with three houses being built right next door. But this is much worse <coughs> because it's four over a longer period of time as far as the build is concerned. So far as the other closes are concerned, 
um, they don't affect us of themselves in Haythrop Drive because there's no natural uh, road that connects those, um, those properties. <coughs> the infield developments, when planning was passed for those, was done at a time before the policy DMH6 was accepted by the council because that dates back to 2020 following the London plan of 2016, if I remember the dates correctly. So the initial development in Haythrop Drive was before all of that was put in place. We now have it to deal with back garden developments. Thank you. Has anybody else got a question? No? You may, if you could turn that button for me off and then get, take a seat. Um, we'll now ask for the applicant, if present, to come forward. Thank you. Is the applicant here? I'm not sure. Bill McLeod? Is Big Bill McLeod here? You are. You'd like to come and take a seat, sir? Same rules apply. You have five minutes. As soon as you press the button, um, you go. Chair, members of the committee. Um, this site forms the last phase of a development that started in 1987, comprising of the rear gardens of properties in Warren Road and Woodstock Drive, now known as Haythrop Drive. It's ironic that the, the person who has just spoken is actually arguing that his own house should not have been built. And also, the same thing applies, that the three additional houses that numbers 20 to 22 were built after the initial phase of Haythrop Drive. That was deemed acceptable to build three houses off that. I fail to see the difference now between carrying on exactly the same process. The, ro the access road was laid out to accommodate this final phase and is confirmed by the Council's own highways department. The whole of the roadway and turning head at the final stage of this is in the ownership of the applicant. Referring to the report, there's a clear, comprehensive report covering all aspects and concludes that the application complies fully with all national and local planning policies, both in terms of the, both in terms of the sort of issues over character, of impact on neighbours, highways, trees, all aspects are thoroughly dealt with in this report. The principle of introducing four detached dwellings on land originally forming the gardens of numbers 25 to 30 Warren, Warren Road is acceptable. The existing properties in Haythrop Drive and Walnut Tree Close have been built on land that encompassed the former rear gardens of Warren Road and Woodstock Drive. Having regard to the siting, scale, height, massing and design, it is considered that the proposed dwellings would not cause harm to the character and appearance of the area. The proposed development would not unduly impact the living conditions of the neighbouring residential occupiers. The proposed dwellings would provide a high standard of internal and external amenity space for future occupiers. The Highways Department is satisfied that the proposals would not present a risk to road safety, hinder the free flow of traffic or lead to parking stress. The proposal would deliver a high quality housing development which would widen the choice of family housing in the borough in accordance with all relevant planning policies and guidance in the development plan. That last section is me reading the conclusion in section one of the application. I'm happy to take any questions. Sir. Thank you very much. Does any councillors have any questions? No? Thank you very much, sir. You may take a seat. Councillor Banerjee, would you like to come take a seat? Um, as a new councillor, I'd just would like to tell you that you have three minutes, not five, so whenever you're ready, sir. 
Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Committee, for your time this evening. Um, I think most of my points have already been addressed, but I would like to reinforce a couple of um, the issues that I um, identified from reading the planning report. Um, you know, let's, let's call a spade a spade. This is backland development. Um, I accept the report and the officer's sort of words around this a precedent has been set, but this was set around 30 years ago. And a thing that's come up already this evening, what was acceptable 30 years ago should not be acceptable today, and we should look at this application against current policy. Current policy, not 30 years ago. So, you know, we're taking land from residents' back gardens and putting this sort of development together. Um, and I think, you know, that I understand there is an access road, but um, it, it is backland development. So that's, that's my first point that I would like to make. Um, secondly, I believe there is a 21-metre rule uh, which we, in regards to the distance between properties and the gaps within the properties, and this application breaches that rule. So 21 is a minimum. So it's not 20, it's not 19, it's 21. And I would like to recommend to the committee that they reinforce this rule and make sure, you know, any recommendations, they, they don't breach this. If the recommendation to reject this application is rejected by the committee and decide to move forward, I would really like them to consider the construction management plan. It needs to be robust, you know, based on the pictures we've seen and the sort of space between cars and HGVs trying to get access to the property is going to be an absolute nightmare for these residents over the 12 months. I've visited the roads in question multiple times. I have a small car. I couldn't park it on that road. I was worried about corners and, you know, um, being hit and grazed by oncoming vehicles. So HGVs are going to cause huge problems in the coming months and years um, this development that goes on for. So, in short, um, backland development, the 21 metre distance, those are the two points I would urge you to consider in this application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Does anybody have questions for the Councillor? No? You may take a seat. Thank you very much. Um, before I open it to the floor, I've just got a question here. My concern is more than the management plan of building it, is looking at that photograph. Obviously, you've done an assessment on emergency vehicles. Can an emergency vehicle get that down that road, a fire engine, or adequately? Because that is one of my concerns after seeing those photos. Can you take that, Alan, or is that possible? Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the road would be 4.8 metres wide, which is uh, the minimum width in Manual for Streets, the document to which we refer to allow a furniture, furniture van, for example, or a fire tender and a car to pass at the same time. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, I'll open it to the floor. So, Councillor Sansapori. You know, I just uh, need a guidance from the officer. The resident who just spoke, his main concern was traffic during construction. What the, uh, what the planning rules say about that, please? Yeah, I'll start with that one and then Alan can finish off if, if he's got anything further to add. So, yeah, I mean, I think we all realise it is obviously really um, inconvenient living next to a development site. You know, we do sympathise, uh, but essentially, you know, it wouldn't be a sound reason to refuse planning permission because that inconvenience and disturbance would be temporary. You know, we've heard from Alan that the road is of an acceptable width, so there aren't safety grounds which we could refuse it on, and officers have proposed... Um, a thorough um, condition to cover construction management. So we don't really have anywhere to go on that one. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Tuckwell. Thank you. I've got a couple of points here, but I just want to pick up on what was said there. So um, listening to the petitioner, I think, you know, I genuinely resonate with the, the, the thoughts about um, the impact on construction traffic, but I also hear what's been said about it is temporary, and you know it, it's got to be built if it's if it's approved. Um, but what I want to we we talk about the new road, but when we saw the pictures, how wide is the existing Haythorpe Drive, and would that be could that pose a, an issue, and how would you know large HGV vehicles? 
or even small ones to, to, that, to that effect. Is condition four, which covers the construction management plan, particularly the point, point around um, traffic management and access arrangement, is that sufficiently strong enough to safeguard the, the residential amenities during the construction phase? But I think we would have to also recognise it is temporary, there is going to be some disruption, but how do we do everything we possibly can to minimise that disruption and safeguard um, the residents during that period? I've got a couple of other points, but I think that's... Yeah. <coughs> OK. Um, the other points, um, Councillor Banerjee mentioned about backland development. I know it's covered in the report, but I think it would be good to address the points there. DMH6, I think it is. Glasses on. Yeah, DMH6. Um, I've read the report. I think it, it satisfies um, the, the exceptionality test. I think it's in there, but I'd be interested to hear officers' views on that because I think that was an important point raised by both the councillor and, and the petitioner. Um, I'd also just like to hear a little bit about the planning history because we, we, we've been asked to, to consider a 2017, 2017 application that was granted at appeal for something very similar, and that might have a bearing on on how we view DMH6, but also that must be about something not 1887 at the this evening. Um, yeah, the, there's a reference to 1987. I just wanted to hear from officers what bearing that has on on this application. Okay, I'll, su I'll summarise. No, I, I actually right. like the scheme, <laughs> and I right. think I, I do like the scheme, but I also think we need to just be thinking about the impact on on the access road and some of these other points I've raised. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tuckwell. So. First one is the road width pre on the existing road. I think you're going to be told that's not up to planning consideration, but we'll see what you said. And then it was a background development and then about planning history, correct? So, Alan, would you like to take the first one? Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, the road leading to the development site, again, is 4.8 metres wide. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's short and sweet. And who's going to talk, talk about the backland? Nisha, do you want to say that one? I don't mind uh, talking about it or summarising what's within the committee report was, so if I miss anything, by all means, uh, chip in. Um, so it is acknowledged within the committee report that this development is backland development. We're not trying to hide that fact. It's very clearly stated within the committee report. What officers then have to proceed to do, as required by policy DMH6, is to assess it against the criteria within that policy. Um, and based against the criteria, which talks about whether it's going to um, harm the capital pits of the area, take into account um, the amenity value of the garden space and also concerns about vehicle access or impacts on neighbours. So all those considerations were considered and that's how we formed the conclusion that it's considered in this particular case that the proposal would comply with the exceptionality test. Um, yeah. Nisha, do you want to take on about the planning history as well? Think, sure. Um, in terms of the context, so I have provided a quite a detailed planning history, mostly just to give you an idea of how this road, Hayfoot Drive, has developed over the years. Um, what I would say is that the small housing estate, if I just show you, and Councillor Tuckwell picked up on it, um, that went to appeal in 2017. So that same issue about building on garden land was considered at an appeal and we lost. Um, and we do have to give that some weight. Um, that is an appeal decision. So I've given that uh, due regard as part of my assessment. It will be for councillors to, to decide how much weight they feel they should be given to the 2017 appeal decision and also the president of the existing houses on Hayfoot Drive, which were all built on former rear gardens of Warren Road. Thank you, Nisha. I think that does that cover all your points, Councillor Tuckwell? The 1987 piece. Oh, yeah, so the 1987 um, reference. Sure. Um, um, maybe I, was, I didn't make myself very clear. So the 1987 reference relates to the permission and the phasing of development that has occurred on Hayfort Drive. So, uh, so I'll just point. So all these properties here were built in phases. The from 1987, there was an outline permission, event to appeal was allowed, and then over time they started incrementally building phases of houses on that street. So that's what's referenced within the committee report.
Thank you. Who else has got any questions? No? Okay. So someone needs to either propose or second it. Councillor Tuckwell. Um, yeah, I've got a, a couple of points to make. Uh, and I know Alan's going to pick these up, so it's good to be sending to each other. Um, again, it comes back to the construction management plan. And, and, and again, I, I really do sympathise with um, the impact that, that large good vehicles um, or construction traffic or diggers or wh whatever it's going to be. I'm just wondering, is, is there anything that officers could add or reword or, or do something to this list of measures that would give residents the safeguards that they're looking for, whether that be... I know we've got, we've got measures to prevent mud, wheel washing, traffic access arrangements, anything around vehicle sizes. Now, I, again, I wouldn't want to constrain... Because, you know, depending on what it is, it has to have a, a relevant sort of size vehicle. But, again, I'm just looking for some support to help safeguard the impact on construction traffic on, that, on this road, should it be approved, and if there's anything officers can sort of come up with that could help us with this, this safeguarding of uh, the impact on residents. Uh, thank you, Councillor Tuckle. I'm going to get Ros to answer that, because maybe we can tighten it up a bit. Something. Thank you. Thanks, Chairman. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, I understand the concern. I'm just having a look at the conditions. So, um, obviously, we've got that Part D, which talks about traffic management and access. I wonder whether, um, if members were minded to agree with me, you could add an additional um, point, which would be to, for the developer to submit details of the size of the vehicles that would um, attend the site and to demonstrate that they would be able to access the site. You know, you could ask for sort of sweat path analysis drawing to be submitted. Yeah. Times as well? Yeah, we could ask for all yeah. of that, yeah. Uh, I don't know what colleagues around the table will think about, but yeah, we could yeah. look at that. Okay, so we have a proposer, which is Councillor Tuckwell, with the additional tightening up of... Um, the uh, management plan on building and Councillor Gohill. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think when you're looking at any application, you have to look at things on, on balance. And I think, you know, the addition of uh, the addition of family homes into Hillingdon provides a huge benefit, a benefit that oversees, you know, my initial concerns, you know, even concerns about, you know, removing trees and, and whatnot. But I think the bringing family homes is going to bring such a large benefit to the area. I am concerned uh, about the, the access to the road, and but I think what Ros just said covers that adequately, so I think with that addition I'd be happy to second um, second that motion and support officers' recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Gohill. Right, so I'm proposed and seconded. Okay, so can I have a show of hands? All those in favour with the application with the additional to the management construction. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you, Anisha. Right, we now move on to item 9, which is land at Longford Close. Is that you, Fiona? Thank you, Chairman. The rest of the agenda is with me now. So. Okay. <laughs> so, um, item 9, land at Longford Close. Um, this application is for a two-storey building that will provide two one-bed flats. Um, this is another one where the history is very important for the site. Um, a small parcel of land at the back of these properties, identified on the site plan there, um, was originally allowed a new building back in 2009, which is, in planning terms, quite a long time ago, as we've well established tonight in our discussions. Um, but the character and appearance has changed, hasn't changed much, sorry. Um, so whilst the policy context has, the character and appearance hasn't, and they all are seeking the same things to, you know, protect that character and appearance as established. Then in, the, this is just a constraints plan, but turning to the, this uh, map and block plan, in 2018, this near identical permission was allowed. I think there's a difference of one square meter and 50 centimeters in, term, in the height. So it's really, really marginal. Um, but this parcel of land was, was allowed for the, the same thing, two one bed flats. So you can see the layout there, one on each floor, and this is the sort of appearance of that detached building. It's just a section drawing there, and here's a bird's eye view. The the important thing here, these, this is the kind of vacant lands and some photos just to show you how it sits adjacent to that kind of access way that comes down. It's 
we would normally be seeking family homes in almost every instance we can but for this plot it, uh, one beds work better um, we think because the amenity space is, is never going to be fully private because it's got that access road running down the side so still important these people will still have or future occupiers if permission is granted would still have access to external space but it's more suited to a, a one bed arrangement we're still getting two new homes on that site um, you know the, the planning history has established we think a precedent for, for developing this site um, so officers are again recommending approval for the application and that concludes my presentation thank you chairman thank you Fiona um, do we have uh, the petitioner Mr Kassan no or oh, Mr Ahmed have I got this one no no not present uh, and the applicant uh, Mr. Singh or Mr. Khan? No? Okay, fine. That's early. It's better for us. I can see there's no councillors here. So um, we'll go straight straight on then to uh, the debate. Just warn members that obviously this is pre-approved, so there's very little we can do with it. But um, I'll open it to the floor. It we'll takes away Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and, and thank you for, for the report. Um, yeah, as, as you said, you know, we are constrained by um, two previous applications. Um, there's been minimum alterations since the 2018 application. Um, I'm not entirely keen on it because it is, it, is, it is squashed into a little parcel of land, but nonetheless, um, it is additional homes for Hillingdon. Um, and the size of the plot, we're not going to get anything sort of family size out of it. So, um, Everything seems to be in order with this one, and as, as, it, as has been said, our hands are slightly tied by precedent. We've had a bit of a history lesson tonight, haven't we, in this country? <laughs> um, it was a good year for music, yeah, I'll have to give you that. Um, so uh, I'm happy to move officer's recommendation. Fine, so I'll move it. Uh, Councillor Tansapori. I'm happy to second that. Fine, that's, that was a very quick application. I like that one. Okay, so I'm proposed and seconded. Can I have all hands in favour of officer's recommendation? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. And we go on to the last petition item of the evening, which is item 10, 14 High Street. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. That's myself again. Um, just draw members' attention to the addendum report. Um, we had contact from the applicant or through his agent or her agent um, after the report was published, just asking for a bit more time um, to submit details that we've requested in, in our recommendation, and we do think that's reasonable. So if we're just suggesting a tweaking to the wording to allow six months rather than four months for, for, that, for the works to be completed. Um, so planning permission is sought to retain an area of outdoor seating to the back of a coffee shop um, down on the high street in Harefield. Um, I'll just show you the, the plan of it. It was originally allowed when, during the pandemic when there were COVID restrictions, and they now want to seek to retain that. As existing, um, at first, they wanted to keep it exactly as it is, and it was um, kind of put together with less than desirable materials, and it's in a conservation area adjacent to a listed building, so we, it's somewhere we would expect a higher, um, you know, better design in order to preserve that conservation area the setting of that building and its significance. So what they've done is they've, they've listened to that, they've come back and addressed the reasons for refusal by producing high quality materials that we're securing further details of to keep that um, outdoor space to the rear. And officers are now um, happy those refusal reasons have been overcome and are recommending approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, does, I'm led to believe that we haven't got the petitions not present and the applicant is not here either so and the council is not here either so what I would say is that I have one question there's one question about um, uh, the oh, what's the name sorry about the grey tiles from the conservation officer um, is there something that we would rec are we recommending to change those grey tiles to um, Yes thank, yeah. yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, we're securing details because we would like to see York Stone there. That would be a more appropriate use of material for the historic building, that historic context, and just will elevate that in order to preserve the conservation area and the significance of the building. And with regard to the petitioner, it's the petition is for the case, which I should have said. I'm sorry. So thank you. <laughs>
Um, I know it well. I was there for many years as a councillor. So um, I'll open it to the floor. Has anybody got any questions? Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, sim similar point that you raised, actually, Chairman. I just wanted just to clarify the, the York stone referred to in Condition 5 is the same referred by the, con the conservation officer. Is that right? Yes, through you, Chairman. That's exactly what we're trying to secure through that. Okay, perfect. I'd, I'd happily go with officer's recommendation. Proposing, yes, sir. Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think this is very straightforward. Uh, also, the thank you for the officer. They explain everything. So, I'm the second. Thank you. So, I am proposed and seconded. Uh, all those in favour of the... Oh, thank you. That's unanimous again. Now, I'm going to leave the room, and Councillor Tuckwell is going to take item 13. Uh, oh, oh, no, is that the last one? No, it's No, 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 we do, we do, what, yeah, I appreciate that because I'd like to finish the meeting that I started, so I'm, I'm going to let Councillor Tuckwell take item 13 and then I'll go back to item 11. Okay. You're going to, you, yeah. apparently I'll do, fine, <laughs> don't touch my computer then, okay. <laughs> Okay, just to, to clarify for those who are watching at home, maybe on YouTube, uh, Councillor Higgins, the chairman of this committee, declared an interest in item 13. Um, as a result of that, he has left the room. Um, and we are taking item 13 now, so he can come back and finish the meeting once we've deliberated over this item. So I think on that note, we will then go straight over to um, Fiona. Yes. Take us through item 13, please. Thank you, Councillor Duckwell. Um, so planning permission on this site is sought for a single-storey side and a double-storey rear extension. It was called to committee by a ward councillor. Just turning to the location plan, it's an area defined by detached and semis um, of a similar age and design. Um, you can see no notable constraints outside of the parking management. Turning to the block plan, you can see it in that context and you can see the existing property here. You can just note that ridge line on the main house because I think that's, that's relevant to our discussions. These are the existing elevations and here we can see the proposed ground floor plan where um, the property would be extended by four meters to the rear and the garage would be replaced by a side extension if permission were to be granted. Proposed ground floor plan in context and here is the proposed first floor plan where you can see a three metre deep rear extension across the back. Again, in context, showing those 45 degree lines being adhered to. The roof plan is interesting here because it shows that a dual pitch is proposed. So th on this rear elevation, that's where you can see this dual pitched roof. And that's really important because again, this property has hit planning history. Um, we recently had an appeal that was, um, well, we refused planning permission and the appeal was subsequently dismissed for a four metre deep extension um, off the back of the whole property, but springing from the main ridge and creating a large crown. Um, now they've come back and sought to address the concerns that were raised by the inspector and by us by reducing the depth of the first floor back to three metres and creating this dual pitch at the back that helps articulate that bulk and massing. And we've explained in the report that we think the reasons for refusal and dismissing the appeal have subsequently been overcome. This is a bird's eye view just showing the variety of properties. Importantly, the inspector, when um, dismissing the appeal, noted that the northern side of the site, northern side of the um, road, sorry, actually has quite a few crown roofs but this southern side doesn't, and that, that was something important to retain, so the crown roof has been removed. I'll just show you some photos of the property, showing this kind of typical design. You can see at the back that rear extensions have been established nearby. We can see one next door. Um, so in context now with its revised design, that's just looking, turning to, uh, let me just double check, that's turning to number 59. This is turning to number 55, but you can see extensions beyond it. So there, you know, a rear extension is acceptable in principle, but the design has been greatly improved. 
and that's why officers are recommending approval. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for that, Fiona. Okay, members, uh, we've got no speakers on this one, um, but just to draw members' attention to what was said about um, the previous appeal and how the designs have been addressed as a result of that. So we'll open up to debate. Councillor Gohill. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm quite happy with this, given how, um, given how they've uh, amended their plan to fit in um, to fit in with the with the relevant uh, policy requirements and sort of looking at the looking at the landscape and the scene of the houses nearby it's clear that other properties have done this before I see no reason why we should refuse it so I'd like to go ahead and propose um, that we go ahead with um, officers recommendations please okay thank you councillor Gohill uh, councillor Singh uh, thank you chair I don't think so any objection on this is very straightforward that one and I'm um, the second for this approval. Okay, thank you very much Councillor Singh. Okay, I'm not seeing any other members wishing to indicate so we are moved and we are seconded so can I take a show of hands in support of officers recommendation? So that's unanimous uh, with one absentee. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Agenda item 13 is approved. Thank you much. We can now just pause for a second and let our chairman come back and settle himself down. Thank you very much. Give me for that. Anyway, back to where we are. Item 11. Um, annex. Let me just get my where I am. Yes, item 11. Access House Bath Road. T typo um, mistake there. It's Harefield. Uh, Heathrow Villages. Um, is that Fiona, you're taking us away. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, we noted that um, error on the addendum report, so apologies for that change. Um, planning permission is sought here for the change of use of a residential car park to a paid public car park. Um, the report is very comprehensive, so I won't uh, um, explain it to you, but it needed to be because of the complexities around this site and the level of objection we have received to it. Um, so you'll see that detailed in there. Um, this site plan isn't the site location plan that um, was submitted. I'll show you that in a minute. This just identifies the area on the site directly affected. So this area is proposed to be changed to the public parking. This is a constraints plan showing that we touched on it in the report, the um, controlled parking zone. And here we have the existing block and location plan submitted by the applicant. Importantly, um, you can see that the red line goes around the whole of Access House as well as the parking area. So we've got an informative on our recommendation explaining that we don't think notice has been served properly. So when an application is received and we receive a, an application form, there's a certificate involved about land ownership. So whilst it's not a material planning consideration, it can, ha can have implications as to the legality of a decision. And so we have concerns that that may not have been filled out correctly in line with what the neighbours have said and the residents of Access House have said. So we've included that informative for completeness. Just turning to the block and location plans, you can see that relationship. Now, Access House is home to 71 flats, um, which was granted a prior notification or a, it was given prior approval back in 2015, 2016 to convert from offices. Um, there's quite a lot of history around it, but what we understand is that this car parking area is used by those residents. Um, and officers, as explained in the report, are very concerned about carving this away, the implications it will have on parking availability and possible displacement, the comings and goings around people's principal habitable rooms directly next to it, 
and also we don't have enough information relating to, to transport and air quality in what is an air quality management area. So officers are recommending refusal for the application for those um, three strong reasons and that concludes my presentation, Chairman. Fiona. Thank you very much, Fiona. That's fantastic. Um, I'll open it straight to the floor. Councillor Gohill, Councillor Tuckwell, Councillor Singh. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, no, 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 no. <laughs> you beat him. <laughs> <laughs> I know, for once. Um, gosh, uh, this application on such a busy Bath Road to turn the to turn the spaces from something that could be used for residents, where I honestly don't think they'd be able to get much parking elsewhere um, on in such a busy area, so close in such a close proximity to uh, Heathrow. Um, I think it causes, um, I think it causes a real problem, um, and which is kind of explains why there's so many residents who kind of who've gone against this as well. My, I mean, my main concern about this is the impact for the residents who stay there. Um, I lost the number of how many residents you said were in the flats. So was it 77? 71. 71. Sorry, 71. Um, that's a lot of people who w could potentially be without cars and without any other adequate space nearby for them to park either, given it given its closeness to the busy Bath Road. Um, and, you know, I'd like to go straight in and say I'd like to support officer's recommendation for refusal on, on that ground of basis. There, there are more, but I think that's the, that's the main one I'd like to I'd like to go on, if, if that's okay. Thank you. Councillor Gohill, would you like to propose that? Is that what you say? Yes, please. Is that what you say? Okay, fine. Thank you. Councillor Tuckwell? No, I think, uh, again, echoing what's just been said by Councillor Gohill, uh, three very strong refusal reasons. I'd always like to tag on a couple more, but I think we'll probably stick with the three, but I'm happy to second. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chair. My colleagues, uh, Councillor Goyal and Tuckwell, they covered everything. My concern was traffic pollution and disturbance for the residents. So I support the officer recommendation. Thank, thank you very much, Councillor Singh. Okay, so I'm proposed and seconded. Can I have a show of hands, though, in favour of the officer recommendation for refusal? Yep, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, item 12. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is for the subdivision of the existing uh, Class E shop into part Sue Generous, a beauty salon, and part um, barber shop. So this is the site location plan, constraints plan, and this is it in the context. This is probably the most helpful slide I'll go straight to. You can see that it's actually already been done. Um, it's part of the local centre of Ickenham and in a conservation area. Um, what they've done is, is divided the shop to provide two separate units, the barber shop and the um, beauty salon, and the resultant shop front has changed. Um, we have consulted with our conservation colleagues and they are satisfied it preserves the conservation area, um, mainly because the pilasters either side of that shop front create a really... Um, clear rhythm and proportion to each shop so whilst it's divided it it's done it quite successfully so they were they were content with that and given the kind of enhanced commercial offering the fact a beauty salon does have traits of an kind of retail unit that we would like to see there officers are happy with the change um, and are recommending approval thank you chairman Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think I, I really like this application. Actually, I think um, you know this council does a lot of work to support small businesses, and uh, and while I'm whilst I'm happy that this is within the scope of the conservation area, I think it could provide a necessary and useful benefit to the to to the society and to the community over there. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, go ahead with officer's recommendation for to approve this. So you'd like to propose it? Yeah. Sorry, yes, I'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> by go ahead, I meant I'd like to yeah, propose it. Thank it's you. It's okay, don't worry. I'll let you off. Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chair and uh, officers. I think this is good for the local business and encourage the local people, and uh, I'm quite happy with the officer's recommendation. I'm the second. Okay, so that's proposed and second. I totally agree with, I think it's nice to see applicants that have actually tried, made an effort to make it look nice on a conservation area, so that's really good. Um, it's been proposed and seconded. Can I have a show of hands, those in favour of the recommendation? 
that's unanimous as well. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. A very eventful night. Um, and I'd like to say, have a safe journey home, and good night to all, and those who are watching as well. Um, and I'll let Anisha turn it off.